Hey everyone, today we're diving into a fascinating ancient tale. Imagine this, civilizations have been wiped out, and the Carrions are furious. They confront Anu, claiming he broke a universal law by causing the extinction of a race. Anu, however, insists that humans are their creation and belong to them. But then, Enlil jumps in. He reveals that not all humans were wiped out, he saved some on a small boat, and there are survivors in the first settlement. Meanwhile, Enki, quietly listening in, decides to keep mum about the Atlanteans and Lemurians he had safely tucked away on boats. The Carrions aren't convinced in Grill Enlil. They ask if he knew about the impending disaster. Enlil replies that he had sent a group of Lulus to explore a gold-rich area, now the border of Bulgaria and Romania. Skeptical, the Carrions turn to Anu, questioning the activation of the nuclear weapons. Anu, calmer now, promises an investigation to find the culprits. The Carrions then leave to assess the damage, finding 93 human survivors, seven of whom are hybrids. They report the Anunnaki's violation of universal law to the Galactic Confederation. Earth is at its lowest point, devastated by the explosions. Enter the Intraterrestrials. Shocked by the Anunnaki's destructive power, they see a chance to attack but face a major hurdle. They lack the technology to reach the Anunnaki's mothership. They plan to hijack transport ships, but Anu, anticipating this, strikes a deal. He offers to teach them weapon building and provide humans for labor. The intraterrestrials face a dilemma. Accepting the deal means a technological leap but also a risk of the Anunnaki creating new threats. Ultimately, they agree, with conditions. No Anunnaki entering the Abzu without permission and learning genetic manipulation. Anu has no choice but to agree. Meanwhile, he orders Enki to create 700 new humans, but this time they're designed to be less intelligent, lacking the psychic powers of their predecessors. Enki, under constant watch, complies but holds hope for the rescued Atlanteans and Lemurians. And now we need to talk about Enki. It's important to understand that Enki didn't exactly love humans in the way we think of love. Reptilian beings like Enki aren't capable of those kinds of feelings. However, he did feel a sense of pride and appreciation for his creations. He didn't want to see them destroyed. Think of it this way, Enki saw humans like we see our pets. He wasn't good, but he was the least bad among the Anunnaki, always curious about how far his creation could go. Yet, as an Anunnaki, he always prioritized his own race over humans. Now, when the Galactic Confederation got wind of the catastrophe on Earth, they demanded an explanation from the Draconians, the supreme reptilian race. Destroying an entire race is a huge deal, a violation of universal laws. The Draconians, caught off guard, knew that such actions could bring the Kedistu down on them, leading to severe consequences. They quickly sent emissaries to Anu, demanding he appear in Orion to explain himself. Anu, preparing for this confrontation, asked Enki and three other Anunnaki council members to accompany him, leaving Enlil in charge of Earth. Enki, distrustful of the others, instructed his son Marduk to keep an eye on Enlil and ensure humans were not harmed. Marduk was also to oversee the creation of the new Lulus, as they had only made 200 of the 700 ordered by Anu. Arriving in Orion, Anu faced the Draconian leaders. They demanded to know why they hadn't been informed about the new planet and the Lulus. Anu explained that he had tried to build a portal to communicate with the Reptilian Alliance but failed. He assured them that the Galactic Confederation was aware of their activities, and even the Carrions were monitoring them. The Draconians realized that if the rest of the Reptilian Alliance found out about the Anunnaki settlement, it would spark conflict and jealousy. Anu then revealed that humans could provide subtle energy that gave the Anunnaki an indescribable sensation. Enraged, the Draconians declared that Earth, or Euras as they called it, and the Lulus now belonged to them. Anu was forbidden from informing the Uzumgul race and the Reptilian Alliance about this. Fearing for his life, Anu agreed, becoming their puppet. 
Seven draconian days later, the Galactic Confederation held its first meeting to address the situation on Earth. Anu, Enki, and three Anunnaki council members attended. The first question was why they had not informed others about the genetic manipulation of an inferior race on a planet outside their jurisdiction. Anu claimed that their ship's communication systems were down and they lacked the elements on Earth to repair them. He had attempted to create a portal to notify the Reptilian Alliance but failed. The Carrions, part of the Galactic Confederation, deemed this unacceptable. They argued that accelerating the evolution of a race against its natural course violated intergovernmental treaties. The Draconians interrupted, pointing out that their emissaries had helped create the Lulus and questioned why the Carrions hadn't informed them. Instead, the Carrions acted in secret, which was also a treaty violation. In their defense, the Carrions stated they only sought to verify the information and had more pressing issues due to the ongoing reptilian wars. And after much debate, the Galactic Confederation finally reached their first agreement to keep the birth of the new human species, the Lulus, on Earth a secret from the rest of the Reptilian Alliance and other Reptilian races. Revealing this could cause significant conflicts and threaten the delicate balance of power. The Draconians, seeing an opportunity, agreed to this. They planned to turn Earth into one of their resource farms, so keeping this secret worked in their favor. They swore to uphold this agreement with the rest of the Confederation. Next, the Confederation questioned Anu on why the Anunnaki accelerated the evolution of an inferior race. Anu claimed it was necessary to create a labor force to build a portal. This answer, however, did not satisfy the Galactic Confederation Council. They pressed further bringing up the activation of three atomic bombs meant to exterminate the Lulus. Anu, remaining calm, explained that the bombs weren't meant to exterminate anyone. He blamed the incident on a rebellious Anunnaki named Pazuzu, who had tried to steal the fate tablets and, in revenge, detonated the bombs. Anu assured the council that Pazuzu had been captured and executed and emphasized that many humans had survived and repopulation efforts were already underway. To understand the gravity of the situation, it's crucial to know about the Tablets of Destiny, or Me Tablets. These devices were essential to Anunnaki life, acting as keys to control weapons, spacecraft, and other technology. They also contained laws, military strategies, and instructions for various tools. Anu, Enki, and Enlil were the primary users of these tablets, with Enlil using them to instill fear and control over humans. Back at the assembly, the insectoids questioned Anu about the purpose of constructing weapons. Anu's explanations were unsatisfactory. After a lengthy debate, they concluded that the Anunnaki needed to be monitored while repopulating Earth and should help raise its vibrational level. The Pleiadians proposed implanting a spy satellite to monitor the Anunnaki and emit positive vibrations to aid Earth. Despite initial resistance, the Draconians agreed on the condition that all members of the Galactic Confederation had access to the satellite's data. This satellite also allowed the Draconians to keep a close watch on Anu. The assembly concluded with this agreement, scheduling another meeting in a draconian month to decide the fate of the intraterrestrials and humans. This led to the decision to implant the moon into Earth's orbit, a task entrusted to the Pleiadians and initiated about 11,000 years ago. This is why the Atlanteans and Lemurians are referred to as the pre-lunar civilizations. The Galactic Confederation had a secret agenda against the Reptilians with this moon implantation. While this assembly took place, 371 years had passed on Earth since Anu's departure, each draconian day equaling 53 Earth years. During this time, Marduk began to succumb to the temptations presented by humans and the elixir they produced in fear, heavily influenced by his uncle Enlil.